And we're back on Fresh Waves. We are talking with Karen Piper of Pepper Tree Classics in Markham. And I'm your host, Bren Masson. We're talking this morning about fashion. Now, we talked a bit about the retail side and buying and buying a year and a half in advance or two years in advance and trends and how they set. What about the trends and people? If the trend doesn't look good on you, it's not your trend, is it? Don't wear it. Okay. If it doesn't work for you, then don't do it. Just because it's a trend doesn't mean that you have to be part of that trend. If it's not a look that's not for you, then don't wear it. You have to be comfortable too. So you can come in and say, oh, I want a pair of the ripped jeans because that is a trend. Mm -hmm. And people can put them on and you might not have the right body shape for it or the right look. And it's possible that it's totally not for you. Okay. And I guess the same would happen with color, right? Exactly. Color is the other thing. I know many years ago there was the color people that were out and they did the colors. And we still have lots of customers that come in and say, I'm a fall or I'm a winter or I'm a summer, which is fine. But when you got your colors done 15, 20 years ago, the colors change. The palettes change. There's that little touch of hues that change. The fashion people don't do their fabrics to match your swatches in your little piece booklet. of booklet that you carry around. It was just a trendy around. thing, wasn't it? It was a trendy thing. And do you hear about colors much anymore? No, you hear different ways of color, like we were talking earlier. But colors is fine if you don't follow the exact pieces of fabric that you got in your little book. Because fabrics change. Everything changes. So you can't go exactly by that color. Yes, you, if you know you can't wear white, you can't wear white. Uh, like me, I don't wear white or black. Because neither You're of them are great on me. You're a white t-shirt. It's off-white. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there are hundreds of shades of white. Exactly. It's like in the color palettes, Benjamin Moore, or, or all the color palettes. There's a hundred shades of white. You go to paint your trim in your house, and it's like, okay, which one do you pick? Because there are so many, it's the same in fashion. There's always different shades, tones of white, from white, 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 to off-whites, to creamier whites. So you have to be comfortable in what you wear. And usually you know if you have a color that you put on that you're not comfortable in, you're not going to wear it. Mm -hmm. But then there's the staples. Everybody thinks that they can wear black. It's not true either, is it? It's not true. I do not own anything black. I don't even have a little black dress because I do not wear black. I don't feel comfortable in black. And it's just one of those things. So if I just don't do black, but everybody has to have a little black pant, which I do own a pair of black pants for just the occasion that I need it for. But seriously, I'd rather wear navy or chocolate brown or gray. Hmm. Well, would it be fair to say that those that wear navy well probably don't wear black well. And those that wear black well probably don't do navy well. Because there are people who look dynamite in black. Yes, there are lots of people that look dynamite in black, and I don't disagree with that whatsoever. But navy and black are basically the same palette. They are the winter fall or winter and summer base. Mm -hmm. There's different shades of navy, and there's different shades of black, which sounds crazy, but there is. Black isn't always black, black, and navy isn't always navy, navy. So it depends on how comfortable, again, you feel about what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. But I do agree that, yes, some people look fabulous in black. Some people look fabulous in navy. There's people that just wear black, but they shouldn't wear black because they wear it because it's easy, right? Oh, well, black's easy. And it goes with everything. It goes with everything, but so does navy and so does gray. So you, it goes with everything. Gray, gray and navy go with white, with red, with yellow, with pink, with blue. So you can, black is the same as your gray and navies. Kind of. When I wear my black pants and by accident, my navy blue socks, People usually have something to say about it. Okay, well, that's not a good idea. Yeah, whether like, my kids say, Mom, got dressed in the dark again, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, that, well, it's different when you're doing it that way. But basically, you can wear black with anything or navy or gray. Mm -hmm. All right. So how do you figure out what is a good color for you? I mean, do you rely on someone at the store? Like in your store, they would definitely say, eh, it's probably not the best color on you. The girls, yeah, yeah, the girls at the store are amazing. We have a team of, of ladies that help everybody and we'll have somebody come in and they'll try on like yesterday for, is a perfect example. We had some ladies in from a fashion show that we're doing in June and the lady was trying on this green color and it was like we all stood there and went, no. And she said, but I like the color. I said, you know what? But it doesn't look good on you. 
And she's like, okay. So off it went, and we put her into her shades of colors, which were more of the pinks and the blues, because the green just, it didn't work. But mm-hmm. then we have lots of people that come in that can wear that green, and it looks dynamite. So you, you kind of have to judge it right, too, because sometimes we'll tell people it doesn't look good on them, and they're like, but I really like it. So it's like, okay, well, if you really like it and you're comfortable, then that's fine. We're just telling you that it's not the best thing we've seen on you. Yeah, it's a, there's nice ways of saying it really doesn't work, but if you insist. Exactly. <laughs> then you can have it. <laughs> yeah, of course, I guess they could have it if it doesn't work. But I, and it's funny, too. I find often um, people who dress other people, where, where, whether it's wives who buy their husband's clothes. That would be a whole other show because I just have such an issue with that. <laughs> if you can't buy your own shirt. <sighs> anyway, um Often if a mom is buying clothes for her kids and things like this, they tend to buy their color palette for someone else. And if you have, you know, blue eyes and blonde hair and you're buying for someone who has kind of hazel eyes and sandy brown hair, it it's not, not often in the same scheme. The colors don't work as well for one as they do for another. And it, it it's staggering sometimes how a person, especially the hazel eyes, I find, Sometimes they look blue, sometimes they look brown, sometimes they look green, and it all depends on what color they have up against their face. It's actually quite amazing. Oh, it is, and it is true, because when people do buy stuff for somebody else, they're like, oh, well, I really like this, but it's not about you. It's about the other person. Are they going to like it? Is it going to look good on them? That's why buying clothes for other people is a really hard thing, Mm -hmm. and that's why we always say to people, do a scarf, do a gift certificate, then at least they can come in and do their own thing and you're not going to be disappointed because they didn't like what you picked. Yeah. Now my husband once went out and he he was so sweet because the lady asked him, well, what colors does she like? And he said, green. Green is one of my favorite colors. Not necessarily for clothes, but it is a big, you know. <laughs> and he, she said, well, what does she like to do? And he said, well, she's always outside. She loves to go walking and hiking and she spends a lot of time in the outdoors. Well, doesn't he come with these little boxes of clothes and it was all khakis and like dark beiges, things that I would never wear that look just awful. Pale me right out. I've got pretty dark skin. It's hard to pale me out, but those colors just wash me out like <laughs> like I've been asleep for about six years. And I felt so bad because what he said was true. It was But green. it doesn't matter whether you like to canoe. <laughs> exactly. I want to wear khakis for canoeing. You like green because you probably like the jade greens and the emerald greens yes. and the bright colors. Yeah. And I love blues, too. So, it, you know, anyway, it was kind of funny. I did have to take them all back. And the lady was very generous about taking them back and getting me something that I liked. But his heart was there. It's just surprising how wrong you can be about colors. Oh, yeah. And you can be totally wrong. I mean, there's colors that just do not work on some people. The entire fall season I have a problem with. I don't like burnt oranges. I don't like burnt reds. I don't like khaki green. I, you know, I have a problem with fall because those are the staple pro- colors every fall. Well, this fall you'll be very happy, girl, because there's lots of magentas, lots of teals, lots of really nice colors and lots of fabulous prints. And it, it's going to be actually, for once, it's going to be a nice fall because there is going to be color. That's good because it's also hard to buy a jacket, which I think is a staple that you're going to have for a while. Like I'm talking a winter coat or a fall coat. And why does everybody have to have a black winter coat? I don't understand it. I hate black in the winter. It's already dark enough in the winter time. We don't need to darken it up anymore. And you see the news and all you see is all these black coats and it's like, Really, like, that's your outer piece. That's your statement piece. Get red, get magenta, get royal blue, get a color that stands out. Mm -hmm. Like you said, winter's long enough and dark enough. Do color. Do something to brighten Mm -hmm. it up a bit. Yeah, but everybody has a black coat. Get a nice white scarf. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. It's something. I mean, it looks like many outdoor activities in the wintertime, especially if they're a formal occasion, look like funerals. In mm-hmm. Canada, mm-hmm. everybody is wearing black. And it's it's Crazy. sad because you think about the skiers. I mean, the skiers, they have all the fabulous colors in ski wear. The oh, staple why can't is you black. Wear in ski wear, too? Yes, because oh, okay. last year we were out. We had, <laughs> I shouldn't be giving this away because we actually stand in the line and we have this thing. We say bus 
and my whole family knows that that's butt ugly snowsuit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so we pick a bus of the day, and um, there was actually someone dressed like a zebra, zebra pattern snow pants with a zebra pattern jacket, and the brand name was top notch. This was a super expensive outfit, but it won our bus of the day. We all agreed that was the bus, but. When we looked this year, my daughter and I were actually quite surprised at how black has come back into the ski world, black and white. And there's black and white jackets. There's black jackets. There's white jackets. There's white pants with a black jacket. There's black pants with a white jacket. It's black and white on the ski hill. Which makes no sense because skiing is such a fun sport and it should be colorful. Now, the young I mean, kids in the borders, they've all got the neon colors yeah. underneath their boards and they're all... But then those guys have all gone into these khaki things, like they're khaki-colored snow pants. My son bought a pair this year, wouldn't buy anything else but the khaki, kind of that goldish-brown mm-hmm. color yeah. of... Like all of, green, yeah. But it's not the green, it's brown, but it's mm-hmm. it looks like work pants. Like construction work pants, but they're boarding pants. And it was all the trend and very, very, very popular with the the 20-year-old crowd. I don't don't get it. No, and that's like, I don't get it with the black coats, like black winter coats. Don't, why? Why? We carry, actually, for years, we've carried winter coats. And I never do black. And the girls are like, we have to get black winter coats. I said, no, we don't. Everybody has black winter coats. Every store in the world has black winter coats. We need to have color. So we do do, we do magentas, we do reds, we do the royal blues, we do gray because gray, it's like a silver gray, so it's pretty, Mm -hmm. navy. And we sell them like crazy because everybody's getting sick of black coats, but people are still always wearing them. It's that conservative edge of Canadians that you find so often. Even if someone really wants to do something different, they, they can't seem to allow themselves to make that plunge into the unknown. It's the boring the... part of us, our Canadians. I think so. Mm-hmm. But there's nothing prettier for me than that red coat against the white snow. I mm-hmm. think that's a really pretty look. Exactly. Exactly. You can put a black scarf with it if and, you really insist on black. And plus now with all the accidents and all the pedestrian things, black is very hard to see it in the is. snow and in the dark. So wear color. Wear color. It's so much fun. And I think it looks pretty. I know. I really think it does. And it makes you feel pretty. Yeah. I actually once had a bubblegum pink ski jacket. I was in a different era. And it was interesting because I went to Queen Street to meet a friend who was going to OCA at the time, the Ontario College of Art and Design. And, you know, it, their trend was pretty gothic black. I stood out like a beacon. <laughs> you would not have believed it. And she's looking at me and she says, really? Bubblegum pink down here? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, but perfect. At least you stood out and people were probably going, oh my God, look at her jacket. Uh, yeah, they actually were wondering who I was and why I was there, but that's okay. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good in the end. It's all good in the end. We're going to take a quick little break, Jay, and when we get back, we're going to continue our fashion discussion and uh, try and get people some guidance as to what's going to look good on them and what's not going to look good on them. You're listening to Fresh Waves. We'll be back right after this. Hey everyone, this is Lil J. Join me every Saturday night at 11 p.m. Eastern for The Block Party. A two-hour journey of the best in the Canadian underground dance music scene. Featuring tracks and DJ mixes from Canada's emerging artists. From the disco hits of the 70s to the latest dance floor fillers. No lineups or cover charges. It's your weekly free access to the beats that are packing dance floors in Canada and around the world. The Block Party, Saturday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern right here on 102.9 Whistle FM and online at whistleradio.ca. Hi folks, Kim Mitchell here. You know, however you choose to get around your ATV, your snowmobile, your boat, car, if you have a motorcycle, all these things take 100% of your attention and skill to operate safely. Alcohol impairs that and bad things can happen. So be smart, okay? You know what I'm going to say next. This message brought to you from the Safe and Sober Awareness Committee. Here we go. We're back on Fresh Waves. We've got Karen Piper in the studio. We're talking about fashions, and I'm your host, Bren Masson, probably the least 
fashion conscious person who should be on the show here talking about this, but it's always intrigued me. Fashion intrigues me. It's that I, I heard once a really good analogy. When you walk into a room, whether it's a party or an office occasion or whatever, and someone says, you look fabulous. Or you walk in and someone says, that's a great jacket. I like that you look fabulous because whatever you are wearing is obviously making the whole picture look really good. Now, that's not to say that when they say that's a fabulous sweater, that it's not doing the same thing. It's just that the the overall look that's created by fashion, I think there's something to be said for that. Well, yeah, and you, and you want to look fabulous. You want to walk into a room and people turn their heads or they come up and say, oh, my God, that outfit looks great on you, or where did you get that? Or well, that's really your style. Yeah, or, yeah, exactly. It fits you perfect. Or when you said about looking fabulous and then that's a great jacket, if somebody's saying it's a great jacket but they had already said something about fabulous, then obviously the great wasn't as good as the fabulous. So it's not the same thing. The two words are very contradictory. Yes. Or that's interesting. (laughs) Yeah. And then you know that it's like, okay, that person really doesn't like what I'm wearing. (laughs) So you do, you have to be careful with what you wear. Like we go through, honest God, we have people at the store with body shapes that are all different. We have people that are size zeros. We have people that are size 18s. We have people that have big busts. We have people that have no busts. We have people that have tiny waists. We have people that have tiny waist and big hips or they don't have any hips. So we try to dress the people to the look that is appropriate for them. So if you have no hips, for example, then something that's a little bit fuller to give you more fullness is a good idea. I'm tiny. So I always layer because that makes me look like I'm bigger than I really am. I know more heels. I wear heels more so now than I ever did because I'm also short. Mm -hmm. So I try and balance everything out and I don't like being tiny, so I try and hide what I can, but I dress appropriately for, I believe, my age. I mean, I'm going to be 60, and I love fashion. I love to have fun. There is age-appropriate looks, for sure, Mm -hmm. and there is looks that are not age-appropriate. And that's why at the store, we are very careful with what we do. If somebody comes in that's 80, they're not going to want a plunging dress to the midriff and showing their arms. And so we are very careful with how we choose items for people. And I think it's really important to be that careful with how you choose items for people. I mean, there are the people who are turning 60 and think that miniskirts are still a thing. And for some people, I guess it is. If you're comfortable in that rocket and rock it with all your might. Exactly. Or short dresses. Yeah. But if miniskirts are in style, but it's not your style, then Mm -hmm. run for the hills. Yeah. Don't wear it. Yeah. Don't wear it. And as you say about skirts, I haven't seen skirts around for a long time. I haven't, like this season for spring, we have a few bits and pieces of skirts, but mostly like denim. And skirts. Skirts skirts are popular popular again. Yes, skirts have definitely taken over the skirt market, but a skirt isn't really, well, I guess you could wear it to the office with a nice blouse because they are, there is some great fabrics, but it's, it's, Everybody wants a skirt because then when you bend over, you've got the little shorts underneath, so you don't have to worry. Mm-hmm. Whereas mini skirts, when you bent over, they, you, yeah, you did have to worry. Mm-hmm. But like you say, the looks are like I wouldn't wear a short short skirt either. I don't have the legs for it, so I'm careful on what length of dresses or skirts I do wear. And that's like everybody. We we know our. I guess, button that pushes us the right way. But some people don't. That's the thing that always surprises me. So, for example, I was downtown at the Eaton Center. I could spend a day not shopping, just people watching. Oh, my goodness, I have such fun. So I was actually, it was in Yorkville, and there was a woman walking towards me that had this beautiful, flowy skirt on that just looked so romantic and so pretty. And then one behind her, the woman behind her, was wearing the... Same length of skirt, but it was the one that's pants, actually. Okay, so like a gaucho or a platzo? Yeah. yeah. And it looked awful. Honest oh. to goodness, it just looked awful. Different body type. So she was the same height, but they one was thinner, one was chunkier. Fuller. And then you were in chunky on the chunky, and it just didn't look right. It didn't look romantic and flowy. It looked big and boxy. And it was actually a stunning representation of... Just because it looks good on one doesn't make it look good on another. 
And I, I remember once a friend of mine saying, oh, I can't wear leggings. I don't wear leggings. And we were all out shopping together. There's about six of us. And we said, oh, come on, try on this leggings and try on this shirt. And she was right. She, she did not look leggings. good in leggings. Yeah. She looked great in a yoga pant that had a bit of a flare at the bottom, mm-hmm. but she just didn't look right in the leggings. Different shape of leg and a different proportion, right? Mm-hmm. And that's with everything. I mean, leggings, there is lots of people that insisted on wearing leggings, but they should never have worn leggings because they did. And they just don't understand it because it was a trend. They thought, oh, I have to have it because it's a trend. You don't have to have it. Right. It's not a necessity in your wardrobe if it doesn't look good on you. Okay. So are there rules of thumb? Like short people, I've always been told that if you're short or you're little, you shouldn't be wearing big, long, baggy things. Not strictly true. It depends on the how big, long, short. baggy thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it depends on how short you are and what the exact look is. Like some shorter ladies know can't wear those longer blouses with the tab up on the sleeves because it overpowers them. So, mm-hmm. but it swallows them up kind of. Exactly. It? Like there's a fine line to every look. It's like big, the big t-shirts, the big boxy t-shirts. Somebody that's really tiny looks great in a boxy t-shirt, but somebody that's got big breasts or is fuller, it looks terrible. So yeah, it's, it's just such a hard call because every person, everybody is different and every age group, every just like everything about everybody is so different. We're never two people the same. So you really have to kind of know what you like. But on the other hand, we have ladies that come into the store and they're like, this is what I wear. And it's like, okay, that's fine. But you know what? Will you just try this to see what it looks like? And they'll try it on. They'll go, oh, why haven't I done this before? Mm. Because everybody gets into a rut. They're in a box. They can't get out of their box. So to step out of the box is a huge deal. Yeah. And, and unless they're, um, encouraged by a friend or a family member or somebody that says, Oh my God, why haven't you been doing that? They, they don't get it. Yeah. It's, it's a very, it's a hard, hard, hard business because there's so many people we come in and we think, Oh my God, she looked great in that. And we'll show her. And she's like, Oh, I can't even, okay, get in the fitting room and try it on. Yeah. And they do. And then 10 minutes later, they're out and they say, Oh, you know what? I really like this. So it's all about, being helped, first of all, customer service is huge. It's huge. People it's go a dying into, art. It is a huge dying art. People go into stores, they wander around, and they're like, oh, well, I didn't see anything. Well, did you ask? You have to ask, and that's why we are there. Customer service is number one. Yeah. We're there to help you with all your needs, head to toe, tell you if it doesn't look good on you, because we do not send people out of pepper tree when if it doesn't look good. Right. Because we get the repercussions of that. Oh, don't you They'll dare. go somewhere <laughs> and somebody will say, oh, where'd you buy that? Well, we don't want to hear pepper tree. <laughs> right? So it's, it's all a catch-22, but... It, I mean, customer service is a dying thing. It is. And we're going to talk about that when we get back from a little break for the weather and some some paying some bills here at the station, because I think it's a really interesting thing now to talk about the fashion and online shopping. You're listening to Fresh Waves. I'm your host, Brenda Masson, and we'll be back right after this. Stay tuned.